The live cold call you're about to listen to I'm great. I'm a little busy right now, Trent. is a real world example of how you can overcome more objections while on the phones in your sales job. I will be showing you firsthand my actual cold call talk track and my strategy to overcoming real objections on the front lines in my software sales job as an account executive. Uh, I mean, I guess, but I can tell you that we don't have any budget to turn anything on in Qualtrics from an employee engagement perspective. I have made over 45,000 verified cold calls, and you may be wondering, Trent, where's the link to your course? I'm ready to buy right now. I'm here to tell you I have no courses, no products, no webinars, nothing to sell you. The reason I make daily sales videos is to help you find more success sooner rather than later. If you object to smashing the like button right now, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. In this live cold call, there are two primary objections. The first one she hits me with right off the bat, now is not a good time. The second objection is I don't have any budget right now. The first objection, I wanna talk through my strategy on that and then you'll hear the live cold call. Now's not a good time. One of my cold calling principles is control the pace at all times. If the call feels rushed, it's you who are rushing the call. So you'll hear right off the bat, I say, hey, Susie, whatever her name is, this is Trent from Qualtrics, how are you? She immediately hits me with, hey, Trent, now's not a good time. Rather than freaking out and saying, okay, okay, I'll call you back later, I say, okay, I slow down, I pause, I slow down, I'm like, okay, would it be fair if I give you a call back later? And then that's the hint in her, her head is, okay, this guy's serious, he's not just gonna go away. And she's like, uh, maybe next week. She's then trying to push me off. And then I bring it back to reality and I say, well, the reason I'm calling you is because I don't wanna make a note to call somebody back if there's not actual alignment interest or any relevancy. So I wanna confirm that before actually calling back. That's the first objection. You get that a lot while cold calling, so I really think you guys will like that. And number two, budget. If the company doesn't have any budget, then that's a big limitation. You'll hear when she says budget, I say, well, I'm not asking for any budget. I try and humanize it and say, of course my solution costs money, but I'm not actually asking for it right now. And then I attempt to better understand their current state to see maybe is there any pain. I try and acquire more information, but the overall takeaway I wanna leave you with is I don't actually end up setting the meeting. I'm publicly sharing a cold call that I necessarily failed on, and that's okay. You're not gonna set all of the meetings you have live conversations with. An ideal set rate is around 15%. That means you would set 1.5 meetings out of 10 live conversations. That's okay. If you get to the end of it and you're at the point where if you keep asking, they're gonna hang up, if you realize there's actually nothing here or this person's just being too difficult, it's okay. It's okay if you don't set it, accept that and recognize that you have momentum because you had a good live conversation and that will help you set more meetings in the future. I really hope you guys enjoy this call as much as I enjoy sharing it with you. This is Desiree. Hey Desiree, this is Trent from Qualtrics. How are you? I'm great. I'm a little busy right now, Trent. thought you were someone else. <laughs> oh, sorry if I caught you at a bad time. Would it be fair if I give you a quick call back sometime later today? Um, uh, maybe next week? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the reason I was calling Desiree is to discuss your employee engagement, employee feedback initiatives. Um, would that be a relevant conversation to chat about for maybe two minutes sometime next week? Uh, I mean, I guess, but I can tell you that we don't have any budget to turn anything on in Qualtrics from an employee engagement perspective. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that, that's that's totally fair. Definitely. Um, not asking for any budget at this point. I'm curious, do y'all plan to do any employee feedback this year in 2022? Yes, but in a very, very, very budget-friendly way, meaning uh, <laughs> our own homegrown uh, program, we'll call it that. Okay. Well, I know you have to, to hop here, um, Desiree, and I noticed you had attended a webinar disrupting tech's growing gender gap with Qualtrics, and really what I'm hearing from other HR leaders is remote work, uh, DE&I, well-being, engagement are really top of mind to drive retention and other business outcomes, and homegrown solutions can work, but typically are low impact, and that's the reason why 13,000 customers use Qualtrics today to drive these outcomes in their business. There, of course, is a cost with that, uh, but typically can drive a pretty big, big business impact, and if this falls within your wheelhouse, I'd love the opportunity for a brief introductory conversation, especially if it is a priority. Um, it is a priority, um, and I actually have already had a, a, a kind of introductory meeting with someone else from Qualtrics. Uh, last name had the word glass in it. I just remember that. Um, and really, it's it's the only thing that is uh, not making us interested is, is that budget. Um, so, 
yeah. Well, we absolutely can get creative. Um, hypothetically, uh, is there a potential number of, hey, we need to stay within this stratosphere or it wouldn't even be possible? Because I've definitely seen situations where we can get really creative. And I, of course, don't want to get ahead of myself with just pure pricing. Uh, but we definitely have options that align with really um, programs that are less in their maturity, but also provide the impact that could be greater than a homegrown program. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, that number is zero. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and I know we use Qualtrics for our customer engagement, and I know our customer executive is actually um, kind of working on a project right now with that side of the house of Qualtrics and how the relation of employee satisfaction uh, is with our um, customer satisfaction, and we're doing that with that comparison essentially with our own homegrown um, employee satisfaction and, and feedback and all of that that we do um, without utilizing Qualtrics currently. But um, I don't know, maybe 2023, but uh, definitely not anytime soon at all. <laughs> sure. I understand that. And I know you have to opt as right. This would be the final point. Uh, just as you think about your long-term roadmap, that is a really important point with your organization using Qualtrics today for customer experience to drive market share, retention, all of that. Um, that's ultimately the, the value of Qualtrics as you think about across your business. How does employee engagement actually drive the customer outcomes you care about? And that's typically the message that really resonates with executives as we start to think about revenue, profitability, and what can actually Im improve your business and being able to connect the work you're doing from an engagement employee feedback standpoint to the customer experience work that's being used on Qualtrics today. That's really one of the core differentiators and why Qualtrics is the leading solution in the experience space. Um, so if there's no budget, then it probably wouldn't make sense to chat. Um, but if there is ever a, a relevant time for a brief introductory conversation, we have changed our pricing model. I mean, I do think it, it could be helpful, but I have respect now it's not a good time. Right. Yeah, it's not. But thank you so much for your call. Have a great weekend, Desiree. All right. You too. Bye. Bye. Let's go. Special thanks to those of you who watched until the end of the video. It's absolutely freezing cold here in Dallas, but I have two announcements. Number one, I qualified for what we call Q Club, essentially President's Club here at Qualtrics. And number two, if you missed it in my video yesterday, whenever the today day is, I don't even really know, um, I got a cameo from the Island Boys. The cameo cost $450, my company got it for me. Um, but it's hilarious. So if you're still watching at this point, comment the island emoji. And I have a feeling it's gonna warm up the weather a little bit for all of us. Beautiful sunset right over there. And that's a wrap on this video. If you got value today, make sure to smash the like button. Although you probably have already done that. So you can leave it the same. Comment the island emoji. As I said, it also helps with the algorithm and it pumped me up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share this video with a friend who needs it. Connect with me on LinkedIn and also, Take a look at me on TikTok. We're ticking up those talks. See you guys. Bye.